this example is a challenging projectile example, and I, I wanted to give you this one because it's more of a real-world situation. If you go to a baseball game and you see an outfielder uh, catches a fly ball and, and tries to throw the ball home to try to uh, throw out the runner who's tagging up from third base, this is kind of that situation. So I give you some different, different values. Now, obviously, the, the baseball player isn't really calculating this in his head, but he has to have some knowledge of the angle of the trajectory in order to successfully get the ball to where he wants it to go. So this baseball player, we know he can throw at the speed of 36 meters per second. Uh, we're going to keep that constant for this example just to make things a lot easier here. He's standing 110 meters from home plate. At what angle must he release the ball so it reaches home plate on a fly? We're also going to assume that he releases the ball from a height of 1.7 meters above the ground. So that's saying his arm is about 1.7 meters above the ground when he releases the ball. So if I draw out this picture, basically he's standing right here. He's going to release the ball and it's going to go and it's going to hit home plate right there. And So we're trying to figure out the angle of his release. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my tables. My X, my Y, just like we would do for any projectile problem. And we look at our displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, displacement in the Y, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time. And we know the standards. So we know that the acceleration in the X is 0 meters per second squared. We know the acceleration in the Y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know from the problem that he's standing 110 meters from home plate. So that's going to be our horizontal displacement. So that's 110 meters. We also know that he's releasing it from a height of 1.7. So it's going from 1.7 down to 0. So negative 1.7 meters is the Y displacement from the beginning to the end. The other thing we know is that the speed is 36 meters per second. We don't know the angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an initial velocity of 36 cosine of theta for the x, 36 sine of theta for the y. So if you think about it, if I drop my vector, if I wanted to figure out, this is 36 meters per second, and if I wanted to figure out my x and my y, if this is the angle theta here, I'd use cosine to find the x component, I'd use sine to find the y component, so I'm just going to use those. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my my displacement equations for the x and the y in order to come up with something we can deal with. So if I look in the x direction, I know that delta x equals vit plus one half at squared. So delta x is 110 meters. Initial velocity is 36 cosine of theta. Time we don't know, so that's just t. Keep in mind, in the x direction, the acceleration is 0, so that's just going to cancel out. So this is what I'm left with in the x direction. In the y direction, then, I'm going to do the same thing. Just use the displacement equation, vit plus 1 half at squared. And I know that it's negative 1.7 meters equals 36 sine of theta times t. 1 half times negative 9.8, so that's minus 4.9 t squared. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, if you look, I have a system of equations. I have two variables, two unknowns. I'm missing theta and t in both equations. I'm going to take the first equation for x here, and I'm going to solve that for t. So if I divide both sides by 36 cosine of theta, I get t equals 110 meters divided by 36 cosine of theta. Now, if I just take that and if I substitute that into the y equation, here's what I'm going to get negative 1.7 meters equals 36 sine of theta times t. This is t, so 110 meters divided by 36 cosine of theta minus 4.9 t squared, so times 110 meters over 36 cosine of theta squared. So this is the equation that I have, and now I have just one unknown, which is theta. In order to solve this mathematically, it's going to require some different trig substitutions. And I know most of you haven't really done the trig substitutions at this point in pre-calculus. So instead of actually using the trig substitutions and showing you mathematically how to solve this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this just on a calculator, because 
it's just like some of the previous examples. We have basically one equation here with an unknown, so we can just set one side of the equation, negative 1.7 meters, into y1, and we'll put the other side, the right side, into y2. This just takes a little bit more typing in. So if I type in 36 sine of theta, I'm going to call theta x, just in this case, times, and I'm going to use my shortcut here to the fraction, 110 divided by 36 cosine of x, minus 4.9, then 110, oops, make it a fraction. So 110 over 36 cosine of x, let me delete this 110 I had in here, and then square that, and then I'm going to just set my standard window and just wait for the graph to show up because it's a little bit more advanced with the trig it takes a little bit longer for the graph to show up and you're probably going to notice we're not seeing anything because when we're looking at an angle here the standard windows from negative 10 to 10 in both the x and the y well the angle is going to be a little bit larger than 10 degrees so I'm just going to set the window the x min from 0 the x min 90 that'll give me between 0 and 90 degrees. So if I do that now, if I graph it, you can see my negative 1.7 meter line there, then you'll slowly start to see this function come in. It's not quadratic. It almost looks quadratic, but it's not if you take a look at it. It's not a perfect parabola. But you will notice that there are two intercepts here. So what we're interested in really for this problem is going to be the first one. The second one is going to take more time because it's going to go at a higher angle. So we're really more interested in the first one here. I will try to be as specific as possible on tests about which one I'm looking for. Like if there's an example problem of he wants to make it into a basket, well this one's not really going to work because that would hit the bottom of the basket. It needs more of an arc to actually get it into the basket. Um, but since we're just trying to hit home plate, this one is going to be fine. Same thing as before, we just second calc, intersection, First curve, press enter. Second curve, enter. Now, for the guess, I'm just going to use the cursor and go to as close as I can to this first intersection point. It's good. Press enter. And it'll calculate it, and it gets an angle of 26.912 degrees. So that's really my, my answer. Is. So it's a little bit more challenging in the fact that with the equation, you need to just use your cosine of theta, then you need to substitute, have a system, then we just plug it in the calculator to solve it. But using the calculator, it shouldn't be too difficult once you get to this final spot.